Welcome to inflation. Let's start with the definitions. So inflation is a sustained general increase in prices over time. Sustained just means that they keep increasing over time. Uh, deflation is just the opposite of inflation. A sustained general decrease in prices over time. Hyperinflation is excessive inflation. In other words, inflation is too high uh, with an inflation rate above 50%. So Zimbabwe once experienced hyperinflation. Stagflation is what South Africa is experiencing right now. You have high inflation, low growth, and high unemployment and all happening at the same time simultaneously. So when you have these three events all happening at the same time, that's stagflation. All right, how do we measure inflation? So to measure inflation, we look at prices in the current year. We call this year the base year. And we look at prices in the following year. So how much do goods and services cost in the current year? How much will the same goods and services cost in the next year will give us inflation. So indexes are used to measure inflation. And there are two um, indexes that are used to measure inflation. The first one is the production price index, PPI. So PPI measures price changes in the production costs uh, when it leaves the factory. In other words, so how much do goods, how much does it cost to produce go uh, goods this year? How much does it cost to produce the same goods next year? That will give us the inflation according to the PPI before that is added. Remember, once that is added, goods will be sold to the consumers. So the consumer price index, the CPI, sometimes called the headline inflation, this one measures changes in the price that consumers pay, right? So in other words, after that is added. So how much am I paying for a particular good this year? How much am I going to pay next year? So when we look at how much consumers pay, uh, we are now looking at the consumer price index, the changes, the inflation according to how much consumers pay. So that's the difference between the two. The first one measures changes in production costs, uses uh, the changes in production costs to measure inflation. The CPI uses the price that consumers pay to measure inflation. And then CPI can also be adjusted. Uh, CPI can be adjusted to core inflation index. Core inflation, core means a real. So if you want the core inflation, you need to move, uh, remove volatile goods and services from the consumer price index. Uh, now, the volatile goods and services are goods and services that pri with prices that change all the time. They're not stable. So those must be removed if we want to see the core inflation. We need to remove volatile goods and services, such as frozen foods. Uh, there's another one that is also adjusted. Now, consumer price index if there's an X there, that X means we must remove the mortgage bond interest or the home loan interest because this one is volatile also. Now let's look at the two types of inflation. We've got the demand pool inflation. And as the, um, the term suggests demand pool, this inflation is pulled by demand. There's too much demand. So uh, there's the definition of demand pool inflation. Uh, it is caused by aggregate demand exceeding, in other words, it's above aggregate supply. So the aggregate demand is more than the supply. So this will cause inflation because you have too much money chasing too few goods. People uh, uh, have money, they are demanding goods, but we don't have enough goods. This causes inflation. Too much money chasing too few goods. Let's also look at this with the aid of the graph. So that um, graph represents uh, conditions in the market. Now, when consumers have money and they are demanding goods, this will shift the demand curve to the right, to the purple demand curve. And you can see at the purple demand curve, the quantity demanded is too high. Uh, 
And what this will cause, it will cause the price to shift from P to P1, causing inflation. Remember, when prices go up, um, that is inflation. So now we look at what the government can do to address demand pool inflation. So South African Reserve Bank can apply a contractionary monetary policy. Right? Remember, the contractionary policy will reduce spending in the economy. Because remember, this inflation is caused by too much demand, too much spending. All right. What can the South African Reserve Bank do? They can increase the repo rate. Remember, if they increase the repo rate, banks will also increase their interest rates and consumers will take less low. Um, or they can increase uh, the cash reserves requirement. Uh, now, banks will have less money because they are keeping most of their money with the South African Reserve Bank. The South African Reserve Bank can also sell securities to banks. Right? If banks are buying securities from the South African Reserve Bank, they have less money to give to consumers. This also controls the spending. Uh, moral suasion is another method used by the South African Reserve Bank. So the South African Reserve Bank can just persuade the banks to reduce loans to, cons to consumers uh, in order to uh, reduce the spending. Okay. From the South African Revenue Services or SARS, what they can do is they can increase taxes. Remember, we want less spending in order to control the demand pool inflation. So if people are paying higher taxes, they, will, they won't have enough money to spend. Uh, reduce government spending. So the, if the government reduces its spending, does not give money to people, does uh, reduces the money that it spends on projects, this will also reduce the aggregate demand. Thus controlling demand pool inflation. The second type of inflation is the cost push inflation. And as its name suggests, this inflation is caused by high production costs. So if companies have high production costs, they don't have a choice. They have to increase prices in order to survive. Some of these um, costs would include the following. It could include increase in wages for the employees, increase in the cost of raw materials, uh, increase in corporate taxes. Remember, corporate taxes refers to the company tax. So if companies are, pay are paying higher tax, they will not have a choice. They will have to increase prices, decrease in productivity. So if employees are not productive, that means that a uh, company will not make money unless it increases its prices. So all these... Uh, causes of cost push, in, uh, cost push inflation. And how can it be addressed? The company can try to reduce costs by, for example, buying from cheaper suppliers, use cheaper production processes, maybe use machines instead of uh, people. Increased productivity also could also help the company to address the cost push inflation. So maybe the company can train the employees to do their jobs better or they can hold employees accountable um, so that they do their jobs much better. Inflation control, this is basically how the government tries to control inflation. So the South African Reserve Bank tries to keep the inflation rate between 3 and 6%. This is called inflation targeting. All right? But also the South African Reserve Bank administers prices. Uh, an example would be to set a minimum price and no one can charge a higher price than the minimum price. So this is another method, the South African Reserve Bank. This one is a more direct method that administered prices. The government just uh, sets a minimum price and no one can increase prices above that minimum price. So the South African Reserve Bank sets prices directly. So those are two ways. It's the inflation targeting and administering prices. Okay, thank you, great talks.